us to revolution there is no more status quo but the sun comes up and the world still spins i helped lafayette draft a declaration then i said i gotta go gotta be in monticello now the work at home begins so what did i Virginia, my home sweet home, I want to give you a kiss. Woo! <laughs> Sold out crowd at AOL Build. Oh my god. What's up? I I that was I I never listened to that song. <laughs> that uh, was a little bit terrifying. That was great though. Meanwhile, I'm backstage doing the choreography. <laughs> <laughs> David Diggs, you Hi. are a rapper, you are an actor, you are a poet, you are an activist, you are Oaklandish, you hey. are a Tony Awards nominee. <laughs> I want to talk about your evolution in all elements of that word, but first let's talk about this week's news, the Tony nominations. Word. You are, are <laughs> nominated as best featured actor in a musical. Yes. There are five actors in that category. Yes. Three of them are from Hamilton. Yes. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be a Tony nominee? Um, it's, it uh, is the craziest thing. I think, I, I don't really know what to make of it, is the, is the honest truth of it. Um, I'm so honored. It's, um, it was not a thing I was looking for. It was not a thing that I, you know, um, it's not a, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't gunning for this, for this Tony nomination. It wasn't, I didn't grow up sort of hoping to one day win a Tony, uh, particularly in a musical. Um, you know, I mean, I, this is the only musical I've ever done. I don't know, so much of this whole experience is me not knowing what the hell I'm doing, so, um, uh, it has been so kind of humbling to just be recognized as even a part of this community of, of Broadway, which the more I delve into it, the more I realize is such a really wonderful community to be a part of. Everybody who are my, my colleagues now um, are such good people, such good, hardworking um, people who are really de dedicated their lives to bringing art at the highest level uh, to the world on on the the biggest stage that a theater practitioner gets to do it on. So I feel very honored to be sort of recognized as a as a, a part of that world. It feels like very official, you know. It's like I got a like I got my my card or something. I was like, <laughs> um, like I could say I'm a Broadway actor now or something. I don't know. It's it's crazy. You earned it. You deserve it. <laughs> I guess. I'm going to take I'm going to call you out a little bit on saying you weren't going for it because in 2012 you released a music video for a song called Fresh Out of the Hood. Woo. And there is a lyric in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh right. And they want to say that the bottoms is the bottom. But I'm calling it the top. They feel me. Then I got them on that Morrison music for this Tony I'm pursuing act a fool for your amusement and you don't know why I do it. I do it for my town. Uh yeah, that was a. <laughs> you were pursuing a Tony back then. Man, that line to me was absolutely about pursuing Tony Morrison's greatness as a writer, and it was a way. Uh, but in the lyrics, it's spelled with a Y, and Tony Nor Tony Morrison's name. Who wrote is those lyrics with down? I. I didn't write those lyrics <laughs> I don't know. down. That's 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 uh, rap genius. Y'all got to take that up with them. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I wrote those on a crumpled piece of paper that's been burnt. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, yeah, for me, I mean, that, oh, man, you really did your research. That, um, yeah, I was living in West Oakland at the time. I've always been a stage actor, so it was a way to sort of equate my, my kind of, uh, I was really nerding out over Sula at the time, um, because the, the, 
characters in that book live in a, a town on the top of a hill that's referred to as the Bottoms. And I was living in West Oakland at the time, which is also referred to as the Bottoms. Um, and so I was, I was really into this, this Toni Morrison duality that was going on with my own life. Um, and I was also doing a bunch of plays at the time, so I thought it was a good way to equate my theater work with my rapper work with my love of Toni Morrison. It was kind of like nerdy rapper rabbit hole that I go down all the time that I never expect anybody to call me on because I don't <laughs> expect anybody to listen to my music. Oh, well, I will just be the first to say that your music is fantastic. And it's clear that the, the rap skills that you developed, that you use in, in Hamilton, especially for a song like Guns and Ships, which is the fastest rap song I've ever heard, um, you developed over the course of years with your rap outfit, Clipping. Yes. Which uh, I would like to just congratulate you on. Um, can you clear something up? Yeah. Clipping spelled with or without vowels. Clipping, so yeah, clipping the band is spelled with vowels, just like clipping is spelled. We prefer it not to be capitalized, and we also prefer there to be a period at the end of it. Uh, but that really, really fucks with copy editors. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We also don't mind when it gets ignored. Um, and that our last album was was our not self titled album that was called. I love your shirt, by the way. Thank you so much for wearing that. There's a clipping shirt in the front row. Um, that's crazy. But uh, yeah, our, our last album was titled CLPPNG. Um, so you it call it the not self-titled? Yeah, it was, a, well, so there's this silly rule that we have where I don't write in the first person. Yeah, I was gonna ask so, you about that. Yeah, so it was our, our way of trying to sort of slyly point that out uh, by taking, taking the, the eyes eye out. out of clipping. It's not that clever, but it was kind of cool. <laughs> Nobody got it either, so it was a <laughs> total failure from a marketing perspective that did not help us at all. And you also are doing some solo rap music as well, right? Yes, yeah, all the time. Um, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to put something else out since 2012. Um, well, you've been a little busy. I've been, <laughs> I've been busy, but uh, I'm also just slow. I just, I'm slow to write, and I'm, um, and I get nervous. I get nervous about, you know, uh, if I'm going to put something out in the world, I want to be able to stand behind it. I want to be able to love it. I say all the time, it's a great thing that all of this attention happened for Hamilton, for this show that I am really, that I have been in love with from day one, because it could it could have been anything else, right? I could have been in a show I really didn't like that much. <laughs> um, but it's very easy to stand behind that product. So I'm, I'm sort of the same way with my music is if I'm trying to put something out, I want to make sure that in 10 years, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, <laughs> that was so dumb, you know, which is going to happen anyway, probably. <laughs> well, that's what evolution is all about. Yeah. Uh, I am interested in your evolution as um, specifically when it comes to education, because I read that your very first performance was doing a uh, dramatic reading of a poem when you were in elementary school. <laughs> yeah, and it man. seems like the, the intersection between music and poetry and education never really ended for me for you from that point forward. Yeah, I so I've always been teaching. Actually, when I went to college, I ended up, I ended up being a theater major, but it was sort of by default because I had looked around and had finished the I'd finished the concentration. We concentrate at Brown. We don't major. Um, <laughs> it's all we can do just to focus. So we concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> but. I, uh, but when I went there, I had these sort of lofty goals of creating this, this arts and education thing. And I was teaching all the time there, too. I had already started kind of teaching in middle schools, going back and doing poetry workshops uh, in middle schools when I was in high school. And when I got to Brown, I um, was going gonna, was gonna to do this thing. I was teaching in Central Falls High School and working with a program called the Arts Literacy Program that was all about teaching reading skills through theater games, really through entering text through a... Uh, uh, a sequence of sort of improv games and then treating the the text as as monologue and and really like trying to learn how to read by learning how to really take on the weight of the of the text on your person and in your life and it was a really it's a really cool program it still exists um, so I was doing a lot of teaching through that too uh, but then it ended up being really complicated to actually get a, a major approved, so I didn't do that. <laughs> um, but I have I went back home to Oakland and was teaching a lot. Um, I sort of developed this rap curriculum uh, that I was 
teaching in a bunch of local middle schools through a lot of funding through the Marsh Youth Theater at the time was writing grants for me to be able to pay me to go teach in schools there, which was great in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, I have always, you know, there are a few teachers, everybody probably has them like over the course of your life. There are a few teachers who just change everything. Um, I hope. I hope all of us have a few of them, and I, I, I certainly did. And oh man, one of them came to the show not too long ago. My seventh grade teacher, Miss Davis, uh, and her husband, who was my PE teacher, Mr. Uchiyumi, came to the show a few weeks ago. And I had even I used to go visit her even when I was back from college and back like teaching around. I used to go visit her all the time. She was that teacher for me. She um, was the person who really. Uh, championed my writing. I used, you know, she would find any excuse for me to write some weirdo little story and let me read it to the class. She made me feel like the words that I came up with, the words that I invented as opposed to the ones that I was reading in other places had value to them. And I really, um, I give the credit to that for her. So it was so great to have her come out and see the show and hang out backstage. And um, it, yeah, it, it was just amazing. But anyway, um, there's this, you have this opportunity and this responsibility as a teacher, I think, to um, try and give students uh, a sense that they can accomplish the task that you are trying to do, um, whatever that task is, and to not dumb the task down in order to make sure that they feel that. That's not the point. The point is that we're going to work on this until you are able to do it. Um, because it's, it, it, that's what it's really about, is the, you know, those of us who are fortunate enough to have been told we were great enough in our lives get to have this wonderful period in adolescence where we feel invincible, you know, where you feel like you can do anything, where you run out and make plays with your friends because you think that, like, you're really great actors and directors and that people should totally come see these and, you, like, all of your, you know, friends and family come see these horrible productions of things that you do, but <laughs> you, you feel so amazing for that. Um, that's important. I think that's really important important and it having that totally changed my life um and so i it's been really important for me to try to give that back uh because i i don't know i don't really know where i'd be had i not had those moments in my life where someone was really championing me um and helping me learn skills along the way that i probably wouldn't realize until later but really just telling me that my voice was worth using i have also heard you say that you stopped believing in talent a long time ago that it's all about the hard work yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there are people who are more or l less sort of predisposed to certain things, right? But if you um, if you really work at something, you get better. So, uh, uh, man, I I I went to I went to Berkeley High School, and there is an incredible jazz program at, at Berkeley High School. There always has been, and. I was playing the saxophone at the time, and I was sort of good enough to get into the jazz band, but I was never going to solo there, you know. Uh, everybody was so much better than me, and a lot of the cats I was playing with are, are professional jazz musicians now. And one of my one of my good friends, Ambrose Akimusuri, uh, who's on Blue Note right now and has two of the most incredible albums you will ever hear in your life. You should go listen to Ambrose's stuff. Um, he, I, we were somewhere, we were sitting at a bar like a bunch of years ago in Oakland and I was saying to him that I hoped one day to be as good at anything as he was at, at playing the trumpet. Um, and he turned to me and was like, that's just practice. I practice a lot and I'm really good. Like that's a direct correlation. He was like, being a good person is hard. Being happy is hard. Those are things that there's not that necessarily, there's not necessarily a direct correlation to that. Finding happiness in your life is a much more difficult thing than being good at anything. If you put in the time, you'll be good at it. So, and you look around at the people and when you look at, you know, when I look at my cast, um, these are people who have worked incredibly hard their whole lives to do this thing. All of us, you know, whatever sort of our, our entryway into this world is, those dancers have put in their whatever it is, 10,000 hours of dancing, but it's really somewhere in the lines of like tens of hundreds of thousands of hours of dancing. And that's why they can do what they do. So if you dedicate the time to something, you get better at it. That's how our brains work. We learn things by repetition and by um, sort of figuring out how things sit on us. So that's what it is.
So in that last answer, you referenced both Berkeley and Oakland. You, I, I'm also from Oakland, if you couldn't figure it out from, yeah. from my shirt. Um, your hat is the Oakland logo, the tree. And um, can you show everybody your socks? I got Oaklandish socks on. Oaklandish socks, you guys. It's not a game right now. Chinaka Hodge gave me these. If you don't know who Chinaka Hodge is, you should. Can you talk about the importance of your roots and giving back to those roots as you become sort of a, a global superstar, if you'll uh, forgive me for the, the hyperbole? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, Oakland is the city that made me, and I, I owe a lot to um, the, just sort of the culture of that place. Uh, the, you know, I mean, it's, it's a melting pot in the real sense of the word, right? At least it was when we were there. And that seems to be rapidly changing, too. And that's another thing for a lot of artists, I think, of my generation who are from there is we are sort of nervous about how quickly the gentrification is happening, how the tech industry is really, like, just, you know, it's all, San Francisco's gone, right? Sorry, San Franciscans, but, like, it's not. It's dead, right? You can't get a burrito in the mission anymore. Come on. You know you can't. Uh, <laughs> you literally can't afford it, and you can't afford to live there, so you can't go there. Uh, maybe y'all can afford to go there. AOL, what's up? <laughs> uh, maybe right? you can afford to go Tech there, folks. Hamilton. Nah, man. I don't know. I don't. That's a misconception too. Let's not get into that. Okay. <laughs> Suffice it to say, I cannot afford to live in San Francisco, <laughs> and I can't really afford to live in Oakland. Is the honest truth of it. My both my my dad was born and raised in Oakland. He just moved out. He lives in Richmond now. He can't afford to live there. My mom moved out seven years ago. She can't afford to live there. You know, um, um, the the so the the sort of disparity of income that all existed in a in a relatively small area was one of the things that made Oakland great. Um, the fact that it had managed to find space for very wealthy people and for very poor people and everything in between, and like a really like robust middle class, like a very large, you know, everybody was middle class, um, was what made one of the things that made Oakland really great. And you know, what, progress is progress, and and property taxes, property prices go up, and every everything goes up, and is it's part of the deal. But it is sad and it's it's scary a little bit. So I do I do have. Uh, a fair amount of, of fear for kind of the future of my city or that kids from there aren't getting to grow up the way that I grew up. And maybe that's good, but maybe it's not. You know, I don't, I, I'm not really qualified to make a value judgment on it because I don't live there right now. So um, I try to check in with it every time I visit and, and see what, just take the temperature of the place. But I am very concerned with always giving back to that city and always shouting it out because it did, it did make me who I am, but then also, um, wanting to make sure that I preserve some of the stories about the way it was to grow up there. Well, you have definitely given back to the school kids. There's a video online that you collaborated with, of, of, amongst other people, Marshawn Lynch, the football player, um, that was actually created for and by the students in the Oakland Unified School District. And I know that um, Hamilton is doing a lot to bring this show, which is, as everyone knows, it's impossible to get a ticket, yet through grants, through the activism and, and the impetus of the cast and the creative team and the producers, 20,000 school kids are going to get to see this show for $10. Yeah. yeah. It's, the, it's actually my favorite thing about the show. It's, it actually is. Um, and like, sorry, not sorry that you can't get in to see those, those student matinees because they are, the energy is the the craziest thing I have ever experienced before. And so we had our first one, and I was sick. I was sick as a dog. I was throwing up, and I woke up vomiting, which is a weird thing. I don't know, you know, I had, like, woke up with a stomach virus and um, called Tommy Kale, our director, and, and said, I don't think, I can't, I can't come today. I'm sorry. And the kids were going to be there at 10 a.m. performing... There, so there's a whole curriculum, there's a whole Hamilton curriculum that has been distributed to the, the schools who are coming as part of this initiative. And representatives from each school were selected to perform their final projects from this curriculum on our stage. Um, and I wanted to be there so bad, and I was just sick and lying in bed, and I was like, well, I could either be sick here or sick watching these kids. So I got up, and I caught a lift, and I took my ass to the theater, and, um, and I was so inspired by those kids that I did both shows that day. <laughs> like, actually walking off stage and vomiting in between, <laughs> in between things. But 
after um, after seeing the sort of bravery and like the heart that those kids put into their performances and getting up on a Broadway stage as a high schooler in front of 1,300 other high schoolers, kids you don't know, can you imagine as a child um, and performing things that they wrote themselves that are based in history, that are incorporating their own stories and using their own voices and choreography and music and beatboxing and rapping and all of this stuff. And I was like, oh, you're not gonna go on stage because you feel a little sick? Get your ass, you know? So it was, uh, <laughs> it was so, it was such a, a, I'm so happy I went and it was the best reminder for really why you do this because that, I mean, that, the energy that they gave in their performances and then the energy that they gave while we were on stage are the things, that's what keeps you doing it. It's this, that's the thing about theater that you don't get from anything else. It's this, it's this. It's like, I can look out, I don't see very well, but I can see y'all's faces <laughs> and, <laughs> and everybody else, like I can see that you are human beings out there and I can feel, <laughs> I can feel your energy coming back to me and that's, that's why you do it. It's an energy exchange that it means something. It means something that you are here with all of the things that you had to go through today to get here, whatever that is, um, that means, you know, you had to register in advance to come here. That's, that's a crazy thing that you did. You're, uh, you know, you had to plan to do this. You bring all of that with you. And those kids brought their whole lives with them onto that stage. And every day on that stage, we get to bring our whole lives with us and tell the story of the founding of this country. And how cool is that? Yeah. I want to uh, turn the the mics over to the audience for some questions. But first, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about some of the things that you're doing next. I know I've seen you on a couple of guest starring roles on TV. I heard that you're going to be working with Boz Lerman. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, so this show, The Get Down, that is coming out, I, I have I have a part in. I can't talk too much about it, but it's um, but I can tell you that working with Baz is the craziest thing I've done. Um, that dude brings a kind of energy onto the set that is like, I don't, I don't even know, you can't, you can't, you don't even know what you're doing. He just starts shouting things. And you just, uh, and it just, and camera people are running around and they're building new track while we're shooting. And, and, uh, and there's, you know, extras are jumping and screaming and you're, it's the, it's the best. It was, um, yeah, the couple times we have worked together have been the, the really just eye-opening experiences of, of ener energy exchange, man. That guy gets that. And so it's no wonder that the things that he produces look and feel the way they do and can elicit that kind of response because you create that energy in the room. He captures it. He gets all the people positioned in the right place to capture it right, and then it translates. Uh, that is just an incredible artist at work. So I feel very fortunate to be a part of it. And the show, I can't, I've only seen, you know, I've only seen a rough cut of the first episode and I was just, I was hooked. Any idea <laughs> when that's going to be available for us? No Now idea. that you've gotten us like drawn in? I literally have no idea. That's that Netflix hype, man. They just put it out when they want. <laughs> <laughs> and we All love right. them for it, right? Like you we love do. that. Uh, let's turn it over to the audience for some questions. Hi, I wanted Hi. to know, do you think with the success of Hamilton, future playwriters and producers will mold their plays and musicals after Hamilton? And do you think you can rap faster than Twister? <laughs> I was just talking about that on the way in. Twister, not the future of uh, theater. The, um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, so I, I think, are you, are you a writer? Yeah? Are you gonna, I mean, it's up to you, really, right? Like, you're the future of, of the American theater. Like, I, the, the funny thing about the ripple effect of Hamilton is it's the kids, it's those student matinees, right? I mean, it's the, it's the younger folks who are coming to see it now that decide that everybody can sort of look at it now however much they want and tr try to, you know, uh, it is, it, if you look around Broadway right now, it's clear that sort of like diverse casting choices are making money, which is an important thing to remember that we are, all, you know, people are making money off of this. Um, so I think, it, you know, it's impossible not to notice that. And hopefully that that is a trend that can continue. But in terms of, you know, what makes Hamilton what it is, is the care that it took, is the care that Lynn took in writing it. Um, he created, and then the care that every person along the way took in putting the right group together. So uh, that method can be mimicked, but I hope it's not going to be, you know, we don't need a Hamilton sequel uh, unless it's like a Lafayette story, or something <laughs> like a casual. <laughs> we, don't, we don't really need that. We, um, I think, 
Um, but I, I hope that if, if other writers are inspired, if you are inspired by it and you decide to use that in your own writing, that's what dictates the future of it, you know. Um, I talk to kids all the time about this, uh, particularly kids who are artists right now, but I've known Lynn for 10 years. That's why I'm in Hamilton. If I had auditioned for Hamilton, I would not be in Hamilton, right? Like, like if I had to go up and like sing 16 bars of a show tune for Alex Lacamoire, like, no. I'm so <laughs> tempted happen. to ask you to sing 16 bars of a show tune. I don't even know right 16 now. bars of a show tune. I literally couldn't do it. I've never auditioned for a musical in my life. I don't know a show tune. <laughs> It's the only musical I've ever done. The only songs I know are ones in Hamilton, and I am not singing Wait For It. Uh, <laughs> Leslie's voice scares me to death. So, um, but yeah, like, you know, that, those are friends of mine, and we are collaborators. So the people you're collaborating with right now, if you're artists, those are the lifelong relationships. Clipping, my band is with, you know, that was one of those band members was my best friend. William Hudson was my best friend in third grade. We met in third grade. We've been friends since then. Um, and just started making music together four years ago, and in the last three years have been able to tour the whole world together, playing in like the shittiest bars all over the world. Uh, and how amazing is that, right? But those are the people, your collaborators are the ones that you make right now. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you this is a good person to work with. Like, I'm honored to work with Baz, and life would have continued had I never worked with Baz, right? How's it going, man? Hey. Um, I'm really excited to see the show. Hopefully I can get a ticket within the next 30 years or so. Uh, <laughs> but you talked about rapping and being an actor. I'm curious, do you approach both things in the same way, or do you find that they both require different levels of like thinking or anything? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I mean, I think the, the attention to craft is, is the same. Right, um, I think, and I guess for me, they're both about solving problems. Right, writing a song is essentially a is a, is a is a it's a pro, it's like a math problem. It's like I I need this effect. Here is the beat I want to use. This is what I want to write about. How do the like this plus this equals what? Um, and how do I tweak that to make it something that is eliciting the response I want? So if I want people to like feel like they should get real drunk right now, how do I do that, you know? What are the, what are the words I need to say to accomplish that? Rap life. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, if I want people to sit and really listen to this, this very sort of introspective story I'm telling about, about how my dad is a bus driver, like what are, the, what are the choices that I have to make in order to make that happen? And acting's the same way, right? You're given a script as a, as a roadmap um, to, an entire life of a person, like your kids is your character's roadmap. So the, the tools that you have are whatever is in the script, and you sort of figure out that plus whatever you have in yourself, what are the pieces of that that you use to elicit the response that you need to do. The thing about theater that is, for me, the thing about acting that is more turned up is the focus on storytelling. Because um, ultimately, like, your job is to tell whatever part of the story you are telling. So to complete your character's arc, to make sure that everything that you do fits within the parameters of the show that you're working on as a whole so that you're, you're, you and your company and your cast can tell the, the larger story. So that it's just a little more story-focused, whereas songs for me are told in briefer, you know, three to four minute or however long the song is stories, unless you're doing a concept album, which this next clipping album may or may not be. I can't, I can't I'm not really a liberty to say. <laughs> oh, you're such a tease. <laughs> that was the worst. So I'm, entering the lottery has become a daily activity, as I'm sure everyone in this room probably agrees <laughs> with me, <laughs> after I wake up. Yeah. So <laughs> my question is, before you started doing this project, was there a fact about Alexander Hamilton that you didn't know prior to this musical? Any fact about Alexander <laughs> Hamilton? <laughs> I did not know a single, I knew, no, I knew that he was shot by Aaron Burr because that first Got Milk commercial, I knew that. Oh, uh, Aaron Burr, I knew that. Um, and that was the, ex I didn't know he was on the $10 bill, I don't think. <laughs> I, didn't, I knew nothing about him before I started working on this. Do you uh, encounter a lot of $2 bills in your day? Yeah, man, people now? be going to the bank to get $2 bills to have me sign, which is so cute. <laughs> so flattering. <laughs> I think we've got time for one more. Brother Diggs, thanks for joining us today. Um, you certainly have an intriguing story, so I was curious to know if you'd be willing to share with us any struggle that you may have encountered uh, pursuing acting. 
maybe you had to choose acting <coughs> over something else, um, not necessarily rapping, but maybe a relationship or just something more personal where mm. you weren't sure if you were going to do that and then you, you forged through. That's interesting. Um, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I've been thinking about this a lot the last in the last couple of days too. The the choice to be an artist of any kind, I think, really requires a, a community. You know, you need a community around you. Um, so when I, I when the Tony nominations came out, I I was asleep. And I was woken up by my brother and my best friend breaking into my house. And they videotaped it, by the way. You can find it on YouTube. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's for sure. It's on my Instagram page because they also broke into my Instagram and posted it. <laughs> but uh, they, uh, they broke into my house and jumped on my bed with a bottle of champagne, right? Um, uh, which was fun. It, it was great and it was amazing. It was so sweet. Um, but the thing that that reminded me of is how much everybody has had to sacrifice everybody in my life has who has made the choice or by virtue of birth is close to me uh has had to sacrifice in order for me to be here right so what you're saying about relationships it is it's hard sometimes to find somebody who who is supportive of you in in all of those ways and in the choices that you somehow have to, sometimes have to make to i have to go be on the road for eight months because this is a piece that really speaks to me and because it's something that i have to do for my career that's a that's a difficult thing and it happens all the time right um and uh, you know my brother my little brother I, I went to brown university my little brother went to community college um because there, the money wasn't around anymore to send him immediately. I mean, we, the family would have worked it out, but he sort of made the choice, I'm going to go to community cut. Like, it's a huge sacrifice that he made, really, for for me. Uh, and, um, you know, so I am surrounded by those people, right? Uh, we grew up very, very poor, um, but I didn't feel, I wasn't sad. I've said this before, I grew up poor, I didn't grow up sad. Um, my my parents were not together, but I had a very involved mother and father who both made, I was the, the happiest person. I felt like I had everything, um, and I, I was sort of surrounded by love all the time. Um, so I never, I never wanted for anything, you know? Um, and I think those experiences, like even through hard times, being able to, even at the hardest times when we don't have any money and like food is scarce, but we can tell jokes, you know, you can laugh your way through things. You can go out and play with your kids in the summer. I mean, that's the, the most incredible thing that my father ever did was always played with me, always, right? Um, whatever I wanted to do in the morning, if he was around, like that's what we were doing. So it was like, I want to go on a hike. So we went and climbed up a mountain. Like that's the, that's, that's the kind of things we did. And having that is what makes those hard times, I think, not so hard because you realize that that's just struggle, but your life doesn't have to be sad. I've actually, I'm, I've very rarely been sad for in any sort of deep way for a long time. And I've also never been bored in my life, as far as I can remember. Like, boredom has never existed for me. Like, my downtime is great. I write a song or whatever. Like, I don't have a job, okay. <laughs> awesome, I don't have to go anywhere today? That shit's dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so those, there is a, there, there's like a very clear silver lining to those hard times, which is I don't, I don't have to answer to nobody if you ain't paying me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so you sort of structure your life. For me, if, you know, you structure your life to get the most inspiration that you can out of any situation and say yes to the things that feel really, really good. And for me, if you keep pursuing the things that feel good, the rest will sort of fall in the place. And it'll be really, really hard at times. You ain't gonna have shit. But um, it'll come around and at least you won't be sad. You won't be miserable. You won't be working in a job that you hate. You won't be, you know, like those things are, like my friend said, happiness is difficult, right? Being good at something is not. Do the thing you want to get good at and you'll, you'll figure out how to get happy. I think that is a beautiful place to leave it for the day. David Diggs, thank you so much for being here. Follow David on Twitter at David Diggs. Follow Hamilton at Hamilton Musical. I'm at Broadway Girl NYC and follow at AOL Build for everything that's coming up here in the coming weeks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys.